Hello, class. Welcome to the lecture for 1-4 from the Forrester book. This is composition of functions, and I want to start off by asking you a question. What is the worst you have ever heard something be mangled in a game of telephone? So you know the game I'm talking about where you, somebody picks a phrase and they whisper it into the ear of the person next to them, who whispers it into the ear of the person next to them, who whispers it into the ear of the person next to them, and it goes all the way around until it comes back to the person who started the message and it's turned into something hilariously different. This game is, uh, an example of composition of functions, and I have a great link that I want you to uh, go click and watch, Rhett and Link. They are these two internet personality guys uh, who are funny, and they use uh, Google cl uh, subtitles, cl Google closed caption, to make a example of the game of telephone. So click on the link and watch the movie, and then come back here. Okay, we are back. This is an example now that you've seen of what can happen when one output is connected to another input, which is connected to another uh, input, on and on and on, in a chain. And in math, we write this as f of g of x, and we call it composition of functions. So here, are an example, here is an example of two different functions. There is s of r, which takes a radius and makes a sphere out of that given radius. And then there is t of r, the tripler, who takes a given radius and makes it three times bigger. So you have to think about, the, again, this is like the last lecture, order matters. There's a certain kind of uh, precedence that happens when, when you take things in a certain given uh, order. So what is t of s of r? Think about that for a second. If we do the tripler on the sphericizer, what happens? We get three spheres because the first thing that happened was we made a sphere and then we tripled the spheres that uh, we had. Versus if we do s of t of r, which maybe is what you thought was going to happen, first we triple the radius and then we make a sphere out of that. So these end up with very different results depending upon which order we take them in. This is an example of composition of functions. Now, let's try taking apart uh, f of x equals x squared plus 9 all over 2. What's the first thing that happens? You take some input, some x has been given to you, and the first thing you do to it, what's the first thing you do to this x? Well, you square it. That's the x squared part. Then what do you do? Then you take whatever number you've gotten from squaring and you add 9 to it. And now you've got the numerator of our big function that we're trying to build up here by parts, and you take that numerator and you divide it by 2. So we could think about f of x here, which is a kind of complicated function, as having three different sort of sub-functions, three different things that it does. And we need to be sure to do them in order. So how can we make these parts? So here you can see I have taken your, uh, the previous slide there, and I've made it into three different functions, g of x, h of x, and j of x. What g of x does is it squares whatever you give it versus what uh, h of x does is it takes whatever you give it and adds 9 to it. and uh, it, j of x takes whatever you uh, give it and divides it by 2. So how can we make this do what we, what we want? We need for this to square it first. So that's g of x. Now, do I want to then say this is g of h of j of x? Think about what that would mean. That would mean that we do j first, that we would take half of the input 
and then we would do H next, so we would add 9 to that, and then G means we square that. So we would have to do G would be that quantity squared. Well, that's not what we set out to do. We wanted the squaring to happen first, and then to have that, so, that, so whatever G, if you think of the game of telephone, whatever G whispers out, we want that to then go into the ear of H. So that means that what H receives as input is what G produces as output. And then we want to take that and feed it into J. So in a certain sense, this is kind of the opposite of what you might have expected. But you just have to read from inside to outside in a mathematical kind of way. So example number one from the textbook on page 24 says, let's find graphically, remember there are four ways that we can think about functions, let's find graphically f of g of 30. So we look at our graph, and at 30 there, there is a particular uh, y value that's happening. I'm, I'm looking just at the inside for a minute. I'm just evaluating what is g of 30. And that looks to be, I don't know, 2.8-ish, that we can evaluate that inside and get a number. And now we're going to look over here at our f graph and say 2.8 has an output of... 180? I don't know. Uh, ballpark it somewhere in that vicinity. So again, we have to work our way from inside to outside, that we do the inside part first, and then that becomes, uh, the output of the, of the inside becomes the input of the outside. That sounds really complicated. So we can also do this numerically. We just did it graphically. Uh, let's do it numerically. Let's try to figure out what happens when we try to find f of g of x for each of these values. So if I plug in, what's, what am I plugging in first here? So here I've got an example of an x that then gets fed into f of x, and separately it gets fed into g of x. So how I need to remember to proceed inside to outside when I'm looking at this function here. I need to do this first and then that. G first and then F. So that means if I plug in 1, G of 1 is 5. And now that becomes the uh, input that I then plug into F. So G of 1 is 5, f of 5 is 0. Did you follow that? Hopefully these, these, uh, these arrows here can help you sort of follow the, uh, the game of telephone that's going on here. There was an initial input of 1, which then turned into 5, which was then plugged into f, which produced that output of 0. Let's try the next one. Let's take an input of 2, and plug it into G, where we get 3. We're on the inside layer right there. We've done that part. So now we take this 3, and we plug that into F, and we get 6. Hopefully this is making sense. If not, rewind, get it again. That the, the game of telephone is about whispering this number into G first. Into G first, and then taking that number and whispering it into F's ear. So there we get a 4. Okay, let's keep going. We've got a 4 that we put into G that gets us a 1. We take 1 and put it into F, we get 3. We take the uh, 5 as an input and plug that into G where we get a 7. What's going on? We can't plug 7 into uh, f. That is not available for us to do. So here we have to have an undefined value. Now, last one, just to finish out the table here. We take 6, we plug it into g, we get 4. We take 4, we plug it into f, we get 2. Okay. Now, the question 
that hopefully should be pretty obvious now is that this whole composition of functions thing, this having one person whisper to another or then going in a different order will not produce the same result. If you have a uh, Israeli person whisper, so, so you whisper something into an Israeli guy's ear, he whispers it into a Chinese person's ear, and then they say what they heard to you. Well, because of the language and the sounds that they're used to and that they're not used to, the parts that get uh, confused by the Israeli person when they hear you and uh, will be different than the part that gets confused by a Chinese person. So this, this same kind of uh, message that you initially said when you whispered into the first person's ear could be totally mangled in different ways when there's a language barrier, depending on the language. This is an analogy for the same, th these functions do different stuff to the input and their output will be different. So f of 2 we can see is 4 and g of 4 we can see is 1. Is that equal to when we say what is g of 2? We take 2, we plug it into g, that gets us 3. And now f of 3 is 6. And no, they are not equal, not anywhere close. So this is not reversible. Now, there are some symbols that we uh, can also see this written as. Depending upon the textbook, the assignment, the teacher, you may get these same ideas about composition of functions said to you in a number of different ways. So first of all, we could see f plus g of x, which is just a confusing way of writing f of x plus g of x. I suppose it is shorter, which is why they invented it, but it's, it's something you need to recognize these two are the same. Same thing can be done with subtraction, that you could say f minus g of x, which is the same as f of x minus g of x. We've also got uh, g or f times g of x, which is the same as writing out long multiplication. These people are really only just saving themselves writing parentheses, x parentheses, but I suppose, and they're not even saving that, they both have two sets of parentheses. I don't know why this is, it's like English spelling. These are accidents of history, sorry. And then there is division. F divided by G of X is the same as F of X divided by G of X. Now, when we start trying to think a more interesting question is to ask about the domain of these functions. What is possible? So if you, if you think about trying to plug in uh, some value, some x's into this, it has to be able to go into both of them. If you pick some x that works in f, but it doesn't work in g, well, that's not something that you can ask about the sum of the two functions with. So the domain has got to be what is in common for both of them. If you try to plug it in here and you try to plug it in there and it doesn't go in, then you're not going to be able to plug it into both and it won't be part of the composite function. Lastly, this one down here, dividing is always a tricky thing. You can never divide by zero. So if you've got some stuff being divided, it also has to be true that the output, the range of g, you must exclude the points where in the range of g that are zero because otherwise you'd be dividing f of x by zero, which is undefined. Now, those were all very intuitive symbols. Plus was plus, minus was minus, times was times. So that's all very straightforward. Somehow, again, not my fault, don't shoot the messenger, this is just history, this weird looking symbol here that looks like fog. Uh, now, but you would, you would think, you know, an O would be a lot bigger than that. But this fog looking symbol means what we've been talking about, F of G of X. So if you insist on thinking that this is an O, then you could say it's the O in the word of, F of G of X but it's pronounced uh, composition. It's G, F composition G. So something to get used to. Now, here's another really good picture uh, like the one in the book where we're saying, how can we think about domain and range of this composite function? So you plug in some numbers here into uh, the, the inside function. This is uh, talking about F of G of X. 
We're, we're plugging in some values into the middle part. And they have to work in the middle part. You can't plug in stuff uh, that won't, isn't acceptable to the function. But now this inside part turns into one kind of blobby that is some bunch of numbers. It's turned into its output. And we can only pick from its numbers that it allows as output into the input. If you uh, whisper to a Hawaiian person, um, Merry Christmas, the closest thing that they can then say, because Hawaiian only has like 13 different sounds in it, is melikilikilaka, is that they don't have an R, they don't let letters be next to each other. There's The game of telephone would be really interesting if you could make it more international and have people who can't even make some of the sounds that you might whisper in their ear. This is, this is what's going on here. Only things that are part of the output of G can even be plugged into F. And then we go over and we find what is F of G of X. And that's our range. So using this understanding now, let's think about what happens if we plug in some basic stuff to our functions here. So here's f of x equals x minus 2, and g of x equals uh, negative 2x plus 8. What's f of 3? Well, you just plug it in. 3 minus 2 is 1. What's g of 3? Well, you take that and you just plug it into g. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is positive 2. Now. Again, working your way from inside to outside, what happens when we try to plug in the value from g of 3 into our f of x? So this, this interior part right here, we know that that value was 2. So we can say in huge font that this is 2. And what is f of 2? Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. Again, working our way from the inside to the outside, we can see that if we take f of 3 first, here I'm still on the huge font. If we take f of uh, 3 first, we know from a moment ago that that is 1. So plugging in 1 now into g means that g of 1. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 8 is positive 6. So this way of working your way inside to outside, I hope you're getting the idea that this is how math works. This is a very common thing. Now we can carry this on to uh, ludicrous extents. We can carry this on all the way up to some very large numbers. If we think about what is g of 3, well, we said initially that g of 3 was 2. And now f of 2 is 0. So I'm going to replace this whole inside part there with a 0. And now what's g of 0? Well, negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 8 is 8. So you're just working your way inside to out. And this can be carried on to crazy levels. f of 3 is 1. f of 1 is negative 1. g of negative 1, what's that? Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 plus 8 is 10. So this whole huge part there is 10. And f of 10, 10 minus 2 is 8. So as long as, I mean, I can make this as big as I want, and you should still be able to just progressively work your way inside to outside, OK? Now, we need to uh, be able to do this in our calculator as well. And if you have forgotten how to do limited domain, go back and watch my supplement uh, that I made uh, yeah, online here. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo. But you need to be able to do functions like this. So we're going to make y1 be uh, x minus 3. So we're going to put that all in parentheses. And then we're going to take a limited domain from x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 7. All of that in y1. 
And then in y2, we're going to say in parentheses negative 2x plus 8 divided by parentheses x is greater than 1 and x is less than 5. And if you do that, then you should get a calculator that looks, can we see? OK, so pause that, go back, look at it if you need it. Now, what I would like for you to do is to uh, pause the video and make sure that you can use the calculator to do this. I am pro calculator. You need to be able to do lots and lots of things with the calculator. We need to be able to find uh, the composition of functions of uh, 6, of 8, and of 2, uh, make a table for uh, all the x values that you could plug in from 0 to 9, and uh, we need to be able to then take that table and make a graph, which should allow you then to be able to state the domain of these composition of functions. So take a minute to do that. Pause the video, and uh, we'll come back, and I'll give you the answer here in just a second. All right, we are back, and here are the answers. If you take these functions and you work your way inside, g of 6 is 3 f of 3 is 2. If you try to take g of 8, it doesn't exist, so you can't do that one. That was a trick question. The inside part doesn't produce an answer, so you, then you have nothing to plug into the outside function. And if you say g of 2, that's negative 1. f of negative 1, there we get stuck. That one doesn't exist because it's not a number that we know about how to plug it. We're not allowed to plug that in to f. So, Here's the table that you can see. And the spot now that you are trying to get allowable for, for everything seems to be restricted between 4 and 7. Again, in your uh, calculator, we should be talking about y2 of y1 of x. And so your couple of graphs here should look should look like this. Got to put it next to my face for it to focus. OK. And then your y equals for that, uh, these are the two functions again and the composition of functions. Now, rather than having to work so hard at the table, I hope you just use the calculator, second uh, table there. And here you can see all the wonderful values produced for you by the calculator. So don't work too hard. Work smarter, not harder. That's a great way to get it to answer that for you. <clears throat> Here you can see the graphics from the book of the same thing. If you, if you think about this is a more algebraic way. So we've done numerical. We've done graphical. Here's uh, algebraic g of x is equal to x minus 3. The original domain of f of x still constrains us, but you can see here if we do this sort of uh, three-part equation thing that if we add 3 to all three sides, we end up with a new inequality that shows us the domain uh, of the composition of functions. There's also another way that you could think about it as a number line and what is common to the two number lines. So I hope this was very helpful. I want you to please, please, please look over the book here in section 1-4. This is getting to be pretty complicated pretty early in the year. You've seen all these things before, but probably it sounds like this knowledge wasn't as systematic in your head as I would like. So look over. I know you're not used to reading a textbook in math, but it is necessary for you to practice talking about, hearing the verbal description, being able to understand what is given to you in English, and then turn that into uh, skills that you have. So please, please, please look over the book and, and read it to yourself. Make sure you can understand and eventually be able to re-articulate it to someone else. 
for uh, an explanation of what's going on. Your homework is to just do number one, come to class with a half sheet of paper detailing number one, A through D, and we will do some more in that section in class. But you need to come with uh, one A through D. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you have a great day.